What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to the bench for a brand new episode of Ben Builds with the Boys. That's right, guys. We are back on our buddy build with Charlie Mac and Joe over at Mad Ginge Productions. And today we're jumping in, cracking into the kit on our P38. So let's go ahead and get started here and see what trouble we can get into today. So I've been looking over the parts and pieces, and the kit looks pretty decent. You know, I don't think it's necessarily huge on details like the Tamiya kit that Joe's building, but it's got a nice amount of detail in here already. So I think we need to add a little bit of detail here and there. Maybe throw some wires in there to bring it up to life, add some spice to it. I think that'll actually be a really nice looking P38. Of course, that means we need references, and I mentioned them last time, but I thought I'd show you here on this episode. These are the books I will be using. This is the P38 Lightning in Action by Squadron. This is one of those kind of general look at the P38, so it goes through all the different marks and makes. And then we have this book right here, the Detail in Scale book on the P38. This is the early version. This is the part one here of the two-part set. And this is going to be basically my Bible for this build. It's got so many great pictures in here, different areas and compartments. We've got full cockpit views. We've got radio compartments. We've got wheel bays. We've got an entire color spread right in the middle of the book of when they were rebuilding Glacier Girl, which I found out is actually still flying. So that's awesome. This shows us wires and piping and all sorts of different integral parts and pieces. I won't be adding all of that because that's just a lot to add, but it gives you a ton of really intricate detail that we can try to replicate and maybe add a little bit of spice to our model. And I think this model needs a little bit of spice for sure. Now you notice it's a couple different colors called out here. So I plan on using this right here as our general color. This is MRP, interior green. This is a really nice paint. So I'm gonna use this for the majority of the actual cockpit color. And then for a couple of panels here and there, I'm gonna pick them out with a dull dark green that I used on my Corsair. That should give us a nice color contrast and make some of the parts kind of stand out. So that'll be awesome. But let's go ahead and jump into our time lapse. And I wanna go ahead and start working on the seat because the kit seat is not the greatest. Got a couple of ideas for that. I'm gonna add in some wiring using some 0.3 millimeter solder. And then I wanna go ahead and scratch build a couple of details because like I said the cockpit is okay but I'd like to add a little bit more spice to it. So let's go ahead and jump in there guys and start cutting out plastic to start stringing some wires and see what we can do. Let's go ahead and start having some fun. Let's get to work on this P38.
All right, so we are back and I wanted to go ahead and show you guys what I've come up with here for the cockpit. As you can see, we have two different seats right here. The one on your left hand side, that is the kit part. The one on the right hand side is what I've created using some spare plastic and using a seat out of a P40 Warhawk. I simply just took that seat and I added some styrene to make it a curved backing, add a little bit of a support right in the middle there of the seat. And I think it looks pretty good. So I'm happy with it. We're gonna be using this one instead of the kit seat. Now you might've noticed I've been going around and adding little circular punches of styrene to different areas here to give it some extra life to make it look a little bit more 3D. I don't know what these parts and pieces or components would do in real life, but I wanna go ahead and add a bit more interest to the cockpit. And I think these little punched out discs of styrene work pretty well. And these are actually pretty small. I think they're probably like 0.5 millimeter. So you can just barely make them out. And I think if I do a little dry brushing and I paint them a certain color, I think they'll jump out at you and adds a bit more layering there to the cockpit. As you can see, I've added in extra wires as well. I tried to be as accurate as I could, but there's a lot more wires in the real thing. So right here, what we have is an artistic representation of what I've seen to add a little bit more spice, a little bit more interest, and to make it look a little bit more lived in, because that's the whole point of it, right? So now that that is kind of done, we're going to set it off to the side. And next thing I want to kind of do is jump into some of the other little sub-assemblies. For example, the P38, at least the early versions, have two landing lights, one on each side of the wing. So we have to go ahead and drill these out. Now we can use a multitude of tools. We've got hobby knives, we've got drills, we've got punches, all sorts of things. So I'm going to go ahead and use a bunch of different tools to go ahead and get the job done. And it looks like these sit a little bit too recessed. I want them more level. So I'm going to go ahead and have to bore out around the actual opening itself. To do that, I can just use an X-Acto knife and I can just come in on a really shallow angle and just kind of slice off as much as I can around the top being very, very careful not to cut or widen the hole itself. I want to keep that pretty similar to what we have right here. Once I go ahead and get this nicely reamed out, I can go ahead and test fit the light again and see if that works. And it is better. It's not perfect, but it is better. I can also go ahead and take our punch, which is actually a little bit larger than the hole. And since the punch is tapered, I can actually use that to press the plastic into that general shape. Give it a little bit of friction there, and it should hopefully go ahead and kind of grind down those edges, making the light lens kind of fit a bit better in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for a little bit. I'm going to get that kind of dialed in and check it out, see how the fit is. And that actually is pretty decent. So let's go ahead and drop a little bit of our extra thin Tamiya glue right on that. That'll go ahead and get that locked into place. And we'll go ahead and switch over to the other side. Now that that is all nicely settled, we're going to go ahead and move over to paint. There's a lot of stuff we still have to do, and I want to make sure we get everything primed with some Mr. Surfacer. Now that's the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is lay out all the parts. We've got some tape set up, so we can stick these down, and then we can come back in and we can start doing some priming. Now I'm going to be using some Mr. Surfacer 1200. That's a really good primer to use. I've got it diluted about 50-50 with some Mr. Leveling Thinner, and we can go ahead and overcoat all the parts and pieces with that particular primer. That should really give us a nice base coat to work off of. I also want to go ahead and start a applying some of the other detail paints like the interior green, black, red, white, gray, all those different colors to add in a little extra detail. The one thing I do have to go ahead and do before I can go ahead and do all the painting is I need to go ahead and add a little bit of some wiring to the radio compartment behind the pilot seat. Now they give you a couple different options for this. I actually picked the one that looked most similar to what I have in my reference books. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. We're gonna drill some holes, thread some cables. We're gonna go ahead and get that primed up after we thread all those cables through, and then we can start to paint. So let's go ahead and jump back into our time lapse. Let's go ahead and push on through the radio wires. Is that primer all set up? Then I wanna paint some of the detail areas. I'm gonna do a little bit of weathering with some pen line accent by Tamiya, and then assemble all the cockpit, and fingers crossed, this turns out. So let's go ahead and get back in there, guys. Let's push on, let's keep it going.
All right, everybody. So we are back. And I got to tell you, the cockpit is actually looking pretty sweet. I like how everything is turned out. It's not perfect, mind you, but I think it's close enough for what we're doing with the kit. And I think it's going to be a neat little project. So let's go ahead and show you guys what we've got. And this is it right here. I'm going to zoom in for you so you get some of the detail. You'll notice that I've got some extra wires in there. I've added a couple of extra scratch built parts, painted with interior green, and I've picked out certain areas there with our dull dark green. So this actually is a really nice looking little cockpit. Now it's not 100% accurate, mind you, but I think it's looking pretty decent. And I think adding in that dull dark green to kind of pick out certain areas is actually really striking. Makes those parts just jump out at you. You'll also notice that along with all the different wires that I've added in, I did add in one little support right here in the back, and that is is something that they don't include here in the model kit for some odd reason but I have seen that detail in multiple subjects so I need to go ahead and come back and paint that with some interior green by MRP it's just some stretched sprue nothing fancy really glued down we're good to go and again talking about the chair you can see my chair here on the left hand side and the kit supplied chair on the right hand side now again the right hand side isn't terrible but if you'll notice the left hand one looks a little bit more like my references. And adding in that kind of circular top to the back was very easy to do. I just did it with some styrene, a little bit of glue, a little bit of super glue to go ahead and sand it down. And I think it's actually quite an improvement over the original seat. So that's going to go ahead and drop right into place just like the other one does. And you'll notice it's a little bit of a platform right here. And this seat just fits perfectly right down on top of that. I also added in the kit supplied backing as well. So we can go ahead and get that kind of tucked under the headrest we should be able to get this nicely tacked into place and I think it's going to take up the space very nicely. And of course adding in that different coloring really makes these areas pop out at you. So I'm very happy with what we've done here. I'm not going to glue the seat all the way in though because I want to come back and add in some seat belts which I'm probably going to have to make next episode. 
But so far, everything fits in there, and I think it's going to be a really nice looking little cockpit. But that is it for us today. Thank you so much for joining us. Coming back next week for episode three of Ben Builds with the Boys. In the meantime, make sure to go check out Joe's channel and Charlie's channel. Like I mentioned last episode, they are two of my favorite YouTube modelers. So make sure to go check them out. Subscribe if you haven't. Give them a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Check out their builds. They got some great work on there. And we'll see you back here on the next episode of Ben Builds with the Boys for the 148 scale Academy P38. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon.